Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new video for the Machine Quilting Party. Today we're going to be piecing our rainbow log cabin blocks. This is such a fun process. It's a traditional quilt block I'm sure you're going to love. So let's get started first arranging our blocks and explaining how those colors come together just exactly right. So let's get started piecing our rainbow log cabin blocks. The first thing to understand is that each block is going to have a dominant color and a recessive color. And that's, those are words from my biology background, but you know, they definitely work for this block. Basically your dominant color is going to have one extra strip that's going to make that color stand out just a bit more in the block. Your recessive color is going to not have that one extra strip, so it's going to be slightly smaller. And the reason why this is important is because we're going to create a stair step pattern that runs through the quilt. And that's important how you place the recessive and then the dominant pieces, those blocks coming together, is what's going to create that pattern. So you definitely want to pay attention to that part of the quilt pattern and make sure that you're arranging the blocks correctly. So let's get started arranging the units so that we, we can piece our first block. So here are all of the pieces that I need for this block arranged. And this is the block that is dominant in orange and recessive in red. And it's really good to arrange it like this because we're basically going to be piecing one seam at a time. You'll stop, press the seam allowance open, and return it to the layout before you grab the next piece. So definitely take the time to arrange your pieces just like this so that way you can see what step of the block you're on as you go. So I'm going to arrange these pieces together so that they're nice and straight and aligned properly. Let's take them to the machine and start piecing this together. Here at the machine I'm just going to make sure those pieces are nicely arranged together. I've stitched through a scrap charger here. It's just a folded piece of fabric and I've ended with the needle in the down position so that way I can lift it up. I'm using my knee lifter to lift it up and I put those pieces right next to the needle. So the very next stitch it's going to take is going to be right onto those fabrics. I've also lowered my stitch length to 1.5 millimeters, so I'm producing a really tight, secure stitch. So these are gonna be locked together really nicely. So stitch all the way through, and then I'm gonna stitch right onto a scrap charger. And as you're piecing your blocks, you can of course chain piece several blocks together at once. I'm just gonna be piecing the one for you here in this video. So now finger press that seam allowance open, give it a good, crease with my fingernail and then hit it with a hot dry iron. That looks good and then return it to the layout. So now it becomes pretty obvious you know the next step is you piece the piece that's going to fit. <laughs> so I just fold that over, take it to the machine and stitch along that seam and here's what that piece will look like once it's been stitched on. So from here you have a really nice pattern that begins and that is two orange pieces, then two red pieces, then two orange pieces. So that always kind of worked for me in my mind whenever I was thinking about piecing this was I, I could kind of stay on track a little bit better with it as I remembered, okay, I'm gonna do two pieces of the same color before switching to two pieces of the next color. And that just somehow works for me. It, it works for my brain. So now I flip this one over. Let's take it to the machine and piece it together. Now you might be wondering about the scrap charger, why I'm messing with that. Well, it just keeps the machine in stitching mode. It reduces your bobbin thread waste, you know, those night, big long thread tails that you can get when you break thread. So it keeps the machine in stitching mode so I can just slide my pieces right up against that needle and I don't have to worry about those thread tails getting sucked down into the bottom of the machine or anything, you know, getting knotted up and having to stop and, and pick things out. So it really does save you some time, save you some thread, save you some bobbin thread, definitely. I stitch off and then right back onto another scrap charger. I'll give this another finger press open. It really is important to get a nice good crease in there. I think that there's something to the angle at which I, I crease my fabrics. You know, it's really straight and perpendicular across to make sure that's nice and flat and all the way open. So there's our block starting to come together. And of course the next piece that fits is right here. So you'll flip that over and stitch it on. 
and here's what it looks like. And you can already start to see that beautiful log cabin effect coming around. And I love this. Now it's really an easy process. Again, we've got two red, then two orange. So we'll flip this one over, take it to the machine and stitch it on. So now that we have so many pieces put together, you might start to notice things go a little bit wonky on your block. You know, your strip might not be coming out exactly the right size. Don't worry about that. We're gonna talk through some issues that can happen as we piece log cabins and as the block gets to the outer edges. The biggest thing is just keep an eye on your seam allowance. Make sure that you're lining up the edges of those fabrics with the edge of your presser foot and that you're staying in alignment from the beginning through the middle to the end. It's easy to lose track. When you're at the end, you might be starting to grab your next piece, but just stay focused all the way through. And again, we'll press that seam allowance open, get it nice and flat. And I know that there's some debate about seam allowances and whether we should press them open or to one side. I really think pressing them open produces a more accurate quilt block. It's gonna come out the right size. And it's also gonna be so much easier to machine quilt because you won't be hitting, you know, four layers of fabric in one place. That can really, you know, break a needle if you hit it just the right way. So I really think that this is perfectly fine and this is why we stitch with a 1.5 millimeter stitch length. So that's how I feel like that's okay. So the next step is to flip over that other piece of red, stitch that on, and here's what the block looks like at this point. So you can see, it's almost like the dominant color keeps changing hands. So when we pieced these two pieces on, it was red dominant. Then we pieced these two pieces on and it became orange dominant. And then right at this point, it's red dominant. So to finish it off and make sure it's ready to go in the quilt, we'll piece on these two orange pieces next. So I'm gonna flip this one over, take it to the machine and stitch it on the same way. With these outermost pieces, it's super, super essential to get things lined up because these are going to be the outermost edges of your block. So whenever I'm piecing this, I always can get a needle in it, start stitching down, and then I line things up all the way to the end to make sure that they're looking good all the way throughout. And it really is a start-stop process. Sometimes I'll stop about two or three inches in and just smooth things out. And then another thing is I am putting a lot of finger pressure on the block. So I'm not just casually holding this, I'm actually pressing down firmly. And that's keeping those fabrics in nice alignment all the way through and off the edge. So I'm giving the block a good press. This is so important. Pressing with every single strip that you attach Make sure that it's staying nice and flat. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you after we stitch on this last strip, just some wonky things that can happen as you reach those outer edges. But stopping to press and check in on your blocks, that's really the key to keeping your eye on how it's going. Okay, so flip over this last strip. I'll take it to the machine and that'll finish off our block. So I'm just getting started carefully. Again, get a needle in it, and then you can ease those fabrics together, and then also double check those edges stay in nice alignment too. I'm gonna make sure everything is straight and it's not getting off. While there is a lot of stop start with log cabins, because of course you have to stop and press between each seam, you can chain piece them together. So if I had all four blocks prepped up, I could be stitching this long strip on all four of them at once, you know, and just chain piece them together. And that works great. That definitely speeds up the process. Now I'll stitch right off and back onto another scrap. So one final time, finger press that seam open. Just really drag your fingernail across it. Um, there are some pressing tools that you can use. I prefer my fingertips just simply because I have, I can really feel it and I know if it is totally flat and open. Uh, but yeah, there are some times that I've broken a fingernail or um, I've, I've cut my fingertips or they're feeling sensitive that that's hard to do. 
So if that's a struggle for you, definitely look into the pressing tools too. Okay, so that is our block. And this is what we wanted. We wanted orange dominant, red recessive, and this looks great. Edges are nice and straight, but the ultimate test is to measure it. So here is the ruler I use to cut out my block, and I'm gonna use it to measure my block too. I think it's really important to use one ruler for an entire project all the way through. It really does make a big difference. And yep, this block is coming out exactly the right size. Now, what happens though, when your block doesn't come out the right size, or even worse, as you're piecing on your outer strips, they don't quite fit. Well, this actually happened to us with dad's blocks. So he started piecing these blocks, and these are some of the, the last blocks that you'll do in your quilt. And I noticed, I was watching him press, and I was like, well, you're getting kind of a ripple here, dad. And I'll, I'll set it on its side so you can kind of see. There's a little bit of a ripple here on the fabric. And I took an iron to it <laughs> and tried to press it down and get it back into the right shape. And I noticed that ripple wasn't really going away. It's a real subtle thing, but it's something that I, I look out for and I notice. And I noticed it was in all, almost all of his blocks had this like ripple along the edge. So we started talking through it and he said, he mentioned that as he got to these outer strips, they weren't fitting. And he was having to do a lot of, uh, a little bit of a fight to get the strip to fit into place. So that to me is an alarm bell. <laughs> I'll be completely honest. Because if things aren't fitting, that's a sign that one or two things is off. Either your cutting is off and your strip isn't the right size, or your piecing is off and that's causing your cutting to, you know, your, your next piece that you've cut to not fit with what you've already pieced. And this is something that's really important with a log cabin because this is exponentially growing. So from the center, we have one, two, three, four seams widthwise and one, two, three, four seams lengthwise. That is a significant number of seams that can start throwing your block off. So let me show you a block the dad only you know, kind of stopped at a, a partial point. So this is the green and blue block. And when I realized what was happening, I said, dad, you need to piece me up a few of these and just leave them. And, and let me show this because this is something that's really important. So at this stage, I hope you can see this, this piece of green went on and look at how much extra fabric is left over. I've zoomed in here so you can really see it. That's almost an eighth of an inch of fabric that's overhanging. That's extra on that strip. Now here's the thing I know about dad. Dad is an excellent cutter. So I know that piece was not cut improperly. But here's the thing about dad I also know is that he is great at piecing, but he's still, you know, kind of working on that seam allowance accuracy. And so whenever I went and measured, and I also spent some time looking at his seam allowances too, they look just a little bit big to me. And I had him piece a few pieces together and I looked at that too, and I realized what's going on is he's ending up taking away just a little too much with every seam. And because this is exponential, a little too much three times can add up to that much fabric. So this is something that might happen to you. So what do you do? Do you force fit things together and end up with the ripple like this? That's an option, but it ends up being a fight. And I don't like the ripple because that's gonna end up coming into your finished quilt. So I don't think that's the best option. I think the best option here and the option we went with with dad was to just start trimming off the strips nice and square. So the extra fabric is right here along this edge and I'm gonna line up my ruler right along that edge. And I wanna be careful because I don't wanna cut any of the blue fabric away. That's okay. It's just this little extra green fabric that needs to go. I can also line up some thin lines on my ruler with that seam line to make sure it's nice and straight. That looks good. Now I'm just gonna cut the extra green. So that little bit doesn't look like a lot, 
but that is enough to start throwing off your block. And as I said, it's always exponential with a log cabin. It keeps growing and growing, and a problem that you have, starting with your very first seam, is gonna grow outward. So now that I've trimmed that away, when this seam goes on, when this piece goes on, you can already even see that it's gonna be a little bit big. That strip's gonna be a little bit big for this block. That's okay, I trim that one up the same way and same thing at the end. What we found after measuring dad's blocks is that they consistently came in at 10 and 3 eighths. So here I'm gonna line up my ruler with this one. I'm actually gonna bring it in just a bit so you can really see it. So 10 and 3 eighths instead of 10 and a half. And I found this really interesting that while you know he was struggling with his seam allowance and it was ever so slightly off, because he was piecing all the blocks the same way, they were consistently off. And I personally say that that's better. It's better to be consistently off and end up with all blocks the same size than you know, keep fiddling around with things and end up with a wide variety of sizes and shapes. So this is something to take away. Your seams may not be perfect, but you can still put together a beautiful quilt. Your goal is consistency. Whatever you piece with, whether it's a perfect seam allowance, a slightly too big, a slightly too small, do it consistently and you can always trim up your block to adjust for it. So that's it for this video. I hope you're learning a lot as we create this rainbow log cabin quilt together. You can always ask questions and post your photos to our Machine Quilting Party Facebook group. So definitely go and check that out and interact with us, we're here to help. Now, if you're looking for the quilt pattern so you can follow along, you can find it in the book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting with Leah Day. This book includes beautiful photos with lots of step-by-step -step instructions, as well as seven, uh, six other projects that you can create with me. So definitely come and pick up this new book at leahday.com slash walkingfoot. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel on YouTube so you don't miss the next video coming out soon. And you can find all of the videos shared so far to this machine quilting party at leahday.com slash 2018 party. Until next time, let's go quilt.